our service this morning. An especially warm welcome to anyone who is watching from home. If you do not know my name, my name is Joy and I'm an associate priest here in the Benefits. So let's just pause for a moment as we come before God, ready to meet him and worship him. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our theme of our service today is about worries and hopes. Where do we place each? And we begin with our first hymn, number 19 in the Orange Book, if you're following that. All my hope on God is found.
My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let's just pause for a moment as we ready ourselves to confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is us, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of Having so prayed, may we know we are forgiven. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we stand to sing the Gloria. children 
in glorious freedom from death and decay. For we all know that creation has been groaning in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And we believe is also grown, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies he has promised for us. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sarah. Please stand again as we sing our next hymn. Father, I place into your hands the things I cannot do. Number 162. Verses 25 to the end. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautiful as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wild flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So, don't worry about these things, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the Kingdom of God above all else, 
and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. you. speak in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We often talk about hope, but I wonder, can any of you define hope? values we have in our schools and yet it's the one I think I can honestly say the children understand least and the staff aren't any better. Most people seem to confuse hope with that desire or that wish for something, something better, a gift or something that is more positive. <clears throat> And yet when Paul was writing about hope, he was talking, yes, about something that is desirable. But he was writing about hope with a confident expectation of that hope being fulfilled. He wrote about it with an eager desire, an eager hope for, for God's kingdom to come. Paul wrote about the time when all things will be made new. All creation will reflect God's glory. And we, yes you and me, will dwell in God's presence. Paul trusts in God's promise and he wants us to join him in waiting in confident expectation of its fulfilment. Earlier this week, we were running prayer spaces at Stafferton School. And they were reflecting on their school values, including hope. And I noticed it was the one value that seemed to have the least comments made on it. They do struggle. But another of our prayer spaces was a quiet space. A space where we encouraged the children to reflect on the last part of the Lord's Prayer. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. And in that space we had a number of images of God's glorious kingdom for the children to look at. But we're aware that not everything in God's kingdom is as glorious as he created it. And so with some of the older children, we had some images of some of the damage that, God, that humans have done to God's kingdom. Damage that we've done through our greed. So there were images of war, of poverty, and the effect of climate change. And as I was doing this the day after the dreadful earthquake this week, I could have added images of the damage caused by that. But I felt that was a bit too raw for the children to reflect on. Indeed, for adults. Paul wrote in his letter that the whole of creation was looking forward to that day when it would have freedom from death and decay, when it could no longer be subject to the, the imposition of man's will. Humankind, mankind has had a 
a dreadful effect on God's creation. And now the very earth itself, the God that God created, is damaged, not just by our actions, but also by our inaction. Just under three years ago, as we entered the first lockdown, I wonder how many of you, like me, suddenly became aware of the clearing of the skies, the sound of the birds. It was as if God's creation was breathing a sigh of relief at the removal of some of the worst of our pollutants, fuel emissions, sounds from engines and so on. But since life has returned to what we can now call normal, our planet continues to groan because of our actions. Paul points to the eternal hope of all creation, the day when all things will be made new and we will be given our full rights as God's adopted children. But to achieve this, we need to trust God. And this is exactly what Jesus is saying to us when he tells us not to worry. I've got to be honest. Whenever I read this passage from Jesus and he says, do not worry, I thought, has he ever tried to turn that to an insomniac? Can any of us honestly say we do not have any worries? For me, worry seems to come naturally, and yet, I gather, it's a learned response. We aren't born to worry. But it doesn't mean that we're free from concerns. When Jesus told us not to worry about the food we eat or the clothes we wear, he didn't say we need never go shopping again, we need never refill the cupboard, we need never plan a meal again or clean our clothes. These things still have to happen, but they shouldn't be our primary concern. Now most of us here today are fortunate. We have sufficient food. We have enough clothing. It may not be the best or the latest fashion, but I don't see anyone here not wearing any clothes today. <laughs> but what about those first hearers of Jesus' words? What did they think? Likewise, some of the poorest of our world, for whom a spare set of clothing is a luxury and a cupboard full of food is an unheard of event. Jesus was fully aware of the poverty around him and yet he was telling people not to worry about their food or their clothing, but to trust to trust in God. We cannot change a single thing by worrying about it. But we can change the world. We can change our lives by trusting in God. Think about it. Jesus spent three years of his ministry moving around the country. As he travelled, he would have spent time watching the birds of the air as they wheeled, enjoying their freedom. He must have seen the fragile beauty of numerous flowers growing in the soil, smelt their glorious fragrance, enjoyed their God-given beauty. Jesus knew that for all who were in the world, the birds could do nothing to ensure that there would be berries to be collected the following day. The flowers could do nothing to prevent themselves being cut down 
and bound for hating. Jesus enjoyed the little things of life and he totally lived in the moment. He didn't have a proper home to return to at night. And I don't know about you, but I've never read anywhere that he carried a bag with his spare clothing and his change of tunic. Yet we know he enjoyed his food, his drink. He loved to share them with others. And at his crucifixion, his clothes were of sufficient quality that the soldiers didn't want to tear them. Instead, they cast lots. Yes, Jesus enjoyed the simple things of life, but he did not live for them. But he lived for the eternal world, the world that comes from knowing and loving God. He tells us, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So what does it mean to seek God's kingdom? Basically, it means making God your priority in all things and over all things. And how do we seek him? As we encourage the children in school, we seek him through prayer. We seek him through reading the scripture. We seek him through worship, through fellowship. And by spending time in his presence. And as we seek God, we come to know him better. We have a sense of fulfillment, of contentment. A sense that comes from resting in him. Knowing God can make us happier people. I spoke of this a few weeks ago when I was reflecting on the life of a friend of mine. How he was described as always having a smile on his face. And his wife said, yes, it's because he loved Jesus so much. He was a happy person. When Jesus was talking to his followers, he was not saying to them, you do not need to shop or provide for yourselves. He was saying, yes, you've got to do that. But do it with joy. Do it because it makes you glad. Because God is our creator and the creator of all. And he wants to feed and to clothe us, to not make life difficult for us. In a world full of worry, it's easy to let worry rub off and onto us. But if we seek God's kingdom, the way of life that goes with it, the righteousness, the right living that marks us out as God's people, then there's no need to worry about our day-to-day -day living. So let's put our hopes, our desires into trusting God and let our concerns about our day-to-day -day lives be just that, concerns and not worries that detract us from God. Then we can enjoy all the good things God has provided for us. The fragile beauty of the flowers, the snowdrops sitting outside the church door for example. And we can trust in an even better tomorrow for ourselves and for all God's creation. Even if tomorrow will bring its own concerns. Amen.
Please stand as we declare our faith in God our Creator. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and that has seen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, his only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. Please be seated as we have our prayers of intercession. Thank you, God. Let us pray for the church and the world. God our Father, renew our hope. By the Holy Spirit's power, strengthen us to pray readily, serve joyfully, and grow abundantly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have the whole wide world in your loving arms. A world where so many people live in fear, famine, conflict, poverty, or in the path from all that Mother Nature can bring. Today, we pray for all those in Turkey and Syria caught up in this week's earthquake. Bring those who are trapped to safety, Lord. Bring comfort to those who mourn the many thousands who have died. Bring strength to those who must now rebuild their homes and their lives. We also thank you, Lord, for the work of the rescue services and for the generosity already shown by people across the world to bring aid to those affected. We continue to pray for the situation in Ukraine and that a peaceful end to the conflict can soon be found there so that the devastation and suffering can cease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Worldwide Anglican Cycle of Prayer today, we pray for the Episcopal Church in the Philippines. Strengthen Justin and Stephen, our Archbishops, Stephen, Karen and Andrew, our Bishops, John, our Rector, and Joy, and all who lead us here, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, you walked on the earth, understood the broken world, yet also rose from death into resurrected life. We pray for all those named on our prayer list today and others known to us who are struggling in body, mind and spirit that they will be held in your loving arms and filled with your restorative spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Merciful Lord, your love reaches beyond the grave. At the end of our days on earth, be with us and with those we love. May those who have gone before us rest in your eternal peace. We remember before you those who have died and we pray for all those whose life is saddened by the death of a loved one. Be with them in their sadness. We especially pray this morning for the families of Maisie Thomas and June Entbury. Lord, in your mercy, hear you our prayer. prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St Mary Magdalene, St Michael, St George, St Mary the Virgin and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. as we prepare to share the peace with them. God is love and those who live in, in love live in God and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. And we continue with singing our next hymn, number 184, For the Beauty of the Earth. Come from you, 
and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Please be seated. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. To you be glory and praise forever. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, given him to be born of woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. To you be glory and praise forever. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit, and made us a people for your own possession. To you be glory and praise forever. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing Renew us by your spirit, 
Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. To, to you, you be glory and, and praise forever. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we all, we all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. For those who have not been able to receive communion either here or at home, let us pray together the prayer of spiritual communion. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. We continue with our post-communion prayer for today. God our Creator, by your gift the tree of life was set in the heart of the earthly paradise, and the bread of life in the heart of your children. Amen. May we who have been nourished at your table on earth be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity. 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out into the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And we conclude our service with our final hymn, Lord of All Hopefulness, number 413. before we go there's always notices just so you're aware tomorrow access to the church will be closed because the yew trees by the door are being trimmed so don't think any of us wish to get in the way of that <laughs> and next Sunday's service should have been at St Mary's but because of the ongoing kitchen work it will be here so please, if you, make, if you make your way to St Mary's, you will find there's no one there. <laughs> Obviously we have Lent coming up. There is a sign-up list at the back if you wish to attend the pancake party at the rectory. I believe there are certain very good people who will be cooking pancakes. <laughs> and it, uh, I managed to attend the one in 19 and this will be the first one we've had since, so I hope it will be a very joyous occasion. And there's also details of our late courses coming up in the newsletter. Can I just point out that the person who is cooking pancakes will not be at the coffee morning at St Mary's on Thursday because it's cancelled. It's cancelled. Oh right, yes, thank you. Thank you for that reminder. Unfortunately, again, because of the work at the, uh, the church, Tin Church, the community cafe has been, had to be cancelled for this week, this month.
And so our final blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those for whom you love and those for whom you pray, today and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.